similar shapes and using similar shapes. We're going to start with this triangle here and we've got some angle measurements inside the triangle. We also have lengths of the sides and I'm going to introduce another triangle right next to it that's a little smaller but um, you might call this similar. Share some characteristics with that larger triangle that we started with and when we're talking about a similar shape, um, similar shapes have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. So kind of a broad definition here but you might you would you would refer to these two triangles here as similar shapes. They are not the exact same size but um, they share some characteristics that we'll talk about for similar shapes. Have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. So two figures are similar if, similar meaning they're um, alike, they're similar if one, the measure of the corresponding angles are equal. So we've got these two triangles here. We look at the angles inside of these triangles. Even though they're two different shapes, you might see here that we have 50 here is the same 50, 110 right down here, and then 20 here. So the measure of the corresponding angles are equal. So, so far these are similar triangles. Secondly, the lengths of their corresponding sides are proportional. So we already talked about our angles here, which went away, but I'll recircle them. And then the lengths of the corresponding sides are proportional. Well, here's what that means. I'll use a green here. But um, if we look at the length of this side, for instance, right here, it's got a 6. It kind of matches up with this one right over here. That's the corresponding side. So we have 6 and we have 3. If you look at the relationship between 6 and 3, it's either a times 2 or divide by 2, however you want to how to put that, but it's either times 2 if we go 3 times 2 is 6, or 6 divided by 2 would be 3. Let's look at another side. Let's see if it follows the same thing. I've got 8 along this side and 4 over here. So when we look at 8 and 4, again, we have a times 2 relationship. 4 times 2 gets into 8. And then they kind of give us an unknown right here, but if we followed the same pattern, with something in 4 and we did times 2 that would obviously give us a 2 out here. So um, yes the lengths of the corresponding sides are proportional. They follow the same proportional rule that it's times 2 on all of the sides. And we'll do some practice with this but this is how we can tell if two figures are similar. Um, also um, a little, little extra note here. Similar shape symbol looks like this. It's kind of a little squiggly thing here. So if you see this little squiggly symbol that looks like this, that is a similar shape um, symbol. And we'll want to be used to looking at that. So let's look at these similar triangles. Um, some more examples of them. Um, right up here, these are two similar triangles. They follow the rule of uh, basically a times two if you look at the corresponding side links right over here. And then with these, we have the angle measurements. Have 30, 30, 30, 60, 60, 60. Of course, this little box in the middle means we have a 90 degree angle. That's 90 degrees right there. So these are more examples of similar shapes. They're triangles. So um, let's look at this one. Are the triangles similar? What if we don't have similar triangles? How would we see that? Well, these two triangles, they look similar. But when we look at the measurements, we'd want to see if they really are. First thing we can do if you want to look at the, the angle measurements, they don't look to be similar. I have 102 here. This one's supposed to be 99. Those are, they're supposed to be the same. 29, 27, supposed to be the same and they're not. And then 49, 54. So um, this is not going to be similar. If we also look to the proportion of the sides, we have 9 and 17. 11 and 22 is a times 2 relationship. But then over here we have a 5 and 11, that would be more than times 2. 9 times 17 is less than times 2. So no, these are not similar and this is how we kind of would determine that. What about trapezoids? We just said we looked at a lot of triangles but you could have different shapes here. So if we had trapezoids, are the trapezoids similar? Take a look at it real quick and think about it and see what you think. We started with the angle measurements. The angle measurements actually look pretty good. The, the corresponding angles, 46, 46, 54, 54, 110 goes there, 110, 150, 150. So, so far we could check off one thing. 
But what if we go to the second thing? Are the corresponding lengths the same? Well, let's start with this here. 8 and 48. Well, I believe 8 times 6 is 48. So we have a times 6 relationship. So do we have a times 6 relationship everywhere else? It doesn't look like we do because from 3 to 18, I know 3, well, actually 3 times 6 is. So that one we do. The one I was looking at is out over here. 6 and 6. Well, we're not multiplying by 6. That's just times 1. And same thing right here. 6 and 6 right over here. So we followed it briefly, but these actually are not similar trapezoids because all of the corresponding links are not following the same proportional rule. They all have to follow the same proportional rule to be similar shapes. Um, and we've got a quick word problem here. If we had a word problem, how could we use this? Again, we're just looking at proportions and similar proportions. Hugo has a small print of one of the paintings in the table. It's a similar in size to the original. The print measures 11 by 10 inches. Of which painting is this print explained? So if we look over here at the paintings in the picture, we know we need to follow an 11 by 10 inch rule. So we, that means 11 needs to go into the first number. Well, I can kind of underline them here. And then 10 would need to go into the second number. So let's see. On the first one, 11 into 30 does not work right there. And 11 does not, 10 does not go into 21. So it's not going to be the Mona Lisa. When we look at the dance class, does 11 go into 33? Well, check it does actually. It goes in three times. And then... Does 10 go into 30? Absolutely. Goes in three times. So the dance class is going to work. Uh, the blue vase 11 doesn't go into 28 and it doesn't go into 18. So we've got our answer dance class for the first one. Um, a local artist, if we look at this question, a local artist painted a copy of Cezanne's painting. It measures 88 inches by 74. Is the copy similar to the original? Similar shapes and a word problem. So that's this this painting right over here and let's see it's 28 by 18 the copy that this person has is 88 by 74 do these follow similar proportions well I'll let you know that they don't if you multiply 20 or divide 88 by 28 you get 3.14 if you try to get 18 into 74, it's, I think, something like 4.11. They don't really follow the same rule, and they don't go in there evenly. So you won't have a same proportion as they go in, so these don't. But just an example of how you could see word problems in similar shapes. So how can we use similar shapes to find unknowns? I kind of like this part. I think this is um, kind of a fun way to use this. Um, if we have something like these two similar shapes and we want to find unknowns, it says ABC, so that's this triangle, ABC right over here, um, is, here's our, our sign, similar to this one, JKL. Find the unknown measures, find the unknown sign. So now that we know they're similar, we know that they have to have the same angles and we know they have to have the same length measurements or the same proportional length measurements, I should say. So let's find... Um, it says unknown side X. We need to si find this right there. Okay, cool. So X is going to be equal to, um, let's see, we need to kind of, this, this shape has been kind of flipped around. Um, 8 corresponds with the 28 right there. So I'm going to just say we have 8 and we have 28. So 1 was 8 and 1 was 28. And we're trying to solve for... Um, we know that we have 12 is the corresponding side to our missing x. So I can put my 12 there and say, now what would this side be? If we followed the proportion, what would this part be right here? Well, I can kind of look for a relationship here. And we've been working on these, but I could look here and see 8 going into 28 and apply it coming down here also. Or I could come around here and say, how many times does 8 go into 12? Well, if you do the math, this is 8 times 1.5. 8 times 1.5 equals 12, or 12 divided by 1.5 is 8. So we would apply the same thing here, times 1.5. We do 28 times 
fix that right over there. Decimal over. Uh, 0, 4. 10 is 14. 0, 8, 2. You should get the answer of 0, uh, 2, and then 4. And once we have to bring the decimal back one place, the answer should be 42. So this missing side should be 42 when we solve. So a way we can solve for the missing uh, side or missing angle even when we have proportions. Um, and solve for this one real quick. You can even pause it and give it a shot. Um, if we wanted to find y and we wanted to find x, pause it, give it a shot, and you can unpause it and see if you do it correctly. Go ahead. So y is just the interior measured the angle and they flip these kind of around but we have the 90 degree angle here 90 degree angle here so directly up from it is where I have 59 so directly up remember the angles have to be the same so this is going to be 59 so y should equal 59 x is our missing side right here and x is going to be the same as this one right here so we kind of look at our pattern as we look through here um, I have, I'll pick this one. It looks like I have 10 and 5 right over here. So I have 10 and 5, and probably a lot of y'all will see where this is going um, kind of in a mental way. If I have 10 and 5, and I know that my new side, this side corresponds to 6, and my unknown, then um, what I can basically do is just half this thing, divide by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 and so x is going to be equal to 3. All of these values essentially um, from this thing right here are double the values of the large one. Last one right here, a photographer is taking a photo of a statue of Paul Bunyan, the legendary giant lumberjack. He measures the length of his shadow and the shadow cast by the statue. Find the height of Paul Bunyan's statue. So just a way I've seen a lot of word problems like this um, and so you just create the portions. We don't have the actual height here, but we can use this one to solve. So we know this one is six feet tall, and we know the length right here is 1.5 feet. Now we know the length of this one right here is 4.5 feet. So how can we change this? And we know that this is six here, how can we go and create a proportion to figure out how tall our Paul Bunyan will be? Well, what I would do is just say, how many times does 1.5 go into 4.5? And it's going to be three times. So you multiply by three there. Would mean you do the same thing here. And six times three is 18. So our Paul Bunyan would be 18 feet tall. So using similar shapes to solve for unknowns.